things, things going on in our church, things going on in life. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about how to get along. And uh, when, I, when I thought about it, just some thoughts came to mind, you know, just before I'd even turn to Scripture. I, uh, you know, to get along, you really need to love each other. And I've learned over the years, you also need to like each other. And there's a difference. You can, you can love people without really liking them. And you need, somewhere along the line, to get along, you're going to have to forgive each other. Uh, yeah, it's, that's, those are all things that I've learned and things that I've seen. But the other thing that came to mind is, to get along, you're going to have, we're going to have to honor each other. There has to be respect. And that, that pushed me to our passage tonight, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. If you turn there, if you have your Bible, Philippians chapter 2 and, and verse 3. This is the verse where God says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. That's not a message you hear very often in our world today, uh, to honor others. And as I looked at the passage, I saw that God had already written this sermon long before I ever even thought about it. Uh, let me read Philippians chapter 1, I'm, I'm sorry, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Philippians 2, verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. <coughs> let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And we'll read more in, in just a moment. But you know, as I looked at that portion of Scripture, I thought, well, you know, here he, he's talking about those same thoughts that had come to my mind. You know, we need to love each other. We need to like each other. We need to forgive each other. We need to honor each other. Actually, he doesn't actually mention forgive there. I'll, I'll mention that later. But one of the things he talks about in verse 1, and then he repeats it again in verse 2, is to consider your, your resources. One of the things we often do is we operate out of bankruptcy <laughs> when we really have the riches of Christ. You know, we, we act like it all depends on us when really it all depends on the Lord. And just these things that he lists in verse 1, you know what tremendous riches we have in Christ. And when he, when he uses that word if there in, in verse 1, it's not talking about a thing, you know, if you have it, if you don't. What he's talking about is in view of the fact that you have this, this is how you should live. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ. Listen, we have consolation in Christ. And that's just talking about encouragement. The, the Greek word is periklesis. You've probably heard that. It's a word that's often used to refer to the Holy Spirit's ministry in our lives. And you know, as, as Christians, the Bible says we have the, the Holy Spirit and he says, this is consolation in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And you know, life can throw curveball. I mean, it can throw hard things at you. A lot of times there, there's things you'll go through that you thought, boy, I never thought I'd go through this. But uh, no matter what happens in life, you have the consolation in Christ. If you know Christ is your Savior, uh, you have His, His presence. I can't remember who was talking. I think it was with the Arcanados. We were talking about how, you know, even, as, even death for a Christian. I mean, really? You get to go to heaven. That can't be all bad. <laughs> now, we all think, you know, I don't want to you know, suffer when I die. I just want to die in my sleep kind of thing. But, uh, you know, no matter how we die, there's consolation because it's, it's the door to heaven. In uh, 2 Corinthians 1.5, he says, as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. So when we, uh, we look at this, this portion of Scripture, number one, there's consolation in Christ. We need to grab hold of that. Uh, when we're going through hard times and we're having trouble getting along with others, uh, li listen, our consolation is not going to be when we get along with others. Our consolation is in Christ. 
I guess I've been around long enough that I finally realized, maybe this week, <laughs> I'm never going to have peace with everybody in the world. You know, it's just not going to happen. And, not, not, and be a Christian. But there's consolation in Christ. The second thing he talks about is there's comfort of love. The comfort of love. And that's talking about his presence. In a sense, consolation in Christ is, is more the, the concept. The comfort of love is the actual presence of, of the Lord in our life. His affection. And, and understand, God's love for us involved, involves sacrifice. That's the way love is. If you've ever loved, you understand that. Love involves sacrifice. The Bible says, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What a blessing. Here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Christ died for our sins. There's the comfort of love. Knowing that God is so committed to us, so committed to loving us, that, that he gave his son. Man, what more could we ask for? You know, we often pray so selfishly and stupidly. We say, oh God, show me you love me. God showed us his love in giving us his son. We have the consolation in Christ. We have the comfort of love. And then he says we have the, the fellowship of the Spirit. What a blessing. Uh, this is the word koinonia. Now, again, maybe you know this word, maybe you don't. It has to do with the fellowship we have together as Christians. The community of, of Christians. Um, you know, not only do you have the Holy Spirit, but other people who have the Holy Spirit have a, a commitment and a community with you. Maybe you've experienced where you'll, you'll meet somebody you've never met before. Sometimes you don't even speak the same language very well, but you both know Christ, and you, you have a, an affinity because you have this, the fellowship of the Spirit. Do you know that every saved person has the same Holy Spirit? You know, as Christians, that, that binds us together. That gives us a, a common bond. We have the fellowship of the Spirit. And then the last one there in verse 1, he talks about bowels and mercies. It's not a common expression we use anymore, but it's just talking about being tenderhearted, having compassion. Do you know that God has a tender heart toward you? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that God doesn't have a grudge against you? Aren't you glad that God doesn't dislike you and think, oh, not this one again? <laughs> we do that. Don't we? But God doesn't. God, God wants to have your fellowship. God has a tender heart toward us. You know, these are our, our let me add something. These are some of our resources. Certainly not all of them. Your resources are not yourself. Listen, don't think that you can just work it out yourself. You, you need to take what Christ offers you and use it. Your resource is not your situation. Listen, you can change your situation, but you're still going to be you. You can, you can move somewhere, but it's still going to be you. The thing that needs to change is your understanding of what Christ has done for you. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, and there is. If there be any comfort of love, and there is. If there be any fellowship of the Spirit, what a blessing there is. If any bowels and mercies, he says, as you consider these resources, put them into practice. Fulfill ye my joy. That's what he's saying. You know, start living these things. Don't just let uh, the world form you. Don't let your situations form you. you know, it's like the, the person, they ask him, how are you doing? He said, well, pretty good under the circumstances. He said, well, what are you doing under there? <laughs> Listen, it's not the circumstances that make us. It's our God. We need to understand that. He says, fulfill ye my joy. Put them into practice. And I, I don't know, I felt like it was a real revelation to me to see the, the comparison of verse 1 and verse 2. Look at this. In verse 1 he says, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ. Verse 2 he says, that ye be like-minded. Now, what he's talking about there is, the pattern we're looking at here is Jesus Christ. And when he's talking about being like-minded, he's talking about us being like-minded with Christ. If there's going to be any consolation in Christ, we need to be like-minded to Christ. 
and apply that to our lives and to getting along with others. Then he says, if any comfort of love. Verse 2 says, having the same love. Listen, that's, that's our pattern uh, for life is the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to have the same kind of love that, that he has. You know, he uses that word comfort of love. Comfort has to do with affection, goodwill, benevolence. Uh, God wants us to have goodwill uh, toward others. In verse 1 he says, if there's any fellowship of the Spirit, verse 2 re replies with being of one accord. You know, the way we're going to be of one accord is when each one of us are in tune with the Holy Spirit. You know, the problem, the reason we have conflict as Christians is we're not Spirit-filled. Right. You know, the Spirit, God is very jealous. We, we usually use that word as a bad word, but it's not when it comes to God. God doesn't want any part of your life to be out of tune with Him. You know, you can be right with God 90%. Not good enough for God. He wants, to, he wants His Holy Spirit to fill you. He doesn't want your school life to be out of whack and your church life to be good. He wants it all to be under His control. And the reason we often don't get along is because one or both of us are running on four cylinders instead of six. We're not letting the Holy Spirit fill us. Then he talks about, in verse 1, bowels and mercies. In verse 2, it's the, the corresponding is of one mind. And this has to do with one mind to each other. Uh, we need to have compassion for others. And that's not just some. Each one of us needs to have compassion. You know, sometimes that's harder with one than another. Now, sometimes if we think somebody is a little bit beneath us, we might think, yeah, I can have compassion for them. But if somebody, we think, oh, they act like they're above me, we still need to have compassion for them, no matter how they act or what we think. Sometimes you can be wrong. Uh, Romans chapter 12 and, and verse 16, there's a lot of verses about this, this particular area. There's probably several passages I, I could have chosen to preach from, but Romans 12 verse 16, I, I think I said 6. Romans 12, 16. He says, Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. And sometimes we do that, don't we? I've had people say to me, Oh, I know what they're thinking. I know why they did that. That's being wise in your own conceits instead of having compassion. Bowels and mercies. We need to be of one mind. Colossians. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Colossians 3, verses 12 and 13. This is one of the verses we memorized last year, I think it was, verse um, 13. 3, 12 says, For Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So he's talking about there about how to get along. Just having compassion for each other. Like Christ forgave us is how we should forgive others. And the way Christ forgave us was He paid the price. He took our sins upon Himself. One, one other passage. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 3 and, and verse 8. I've always found this an interesting verse. He says, finally, be all of one mind. See, that, that's our subject here is bowels and mercies, one mind. Be all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. <laughs> be courteous. And we often use that pitiful, oh, what a pitiful person. Yeah. But it means having pity for someone. But look at verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing. You know, when someone is unkind to you, the, the natural response is to be unkind back and twice as much. God says, don't do that. But contrary wise, blessing. You, you know, when Jesus preached, he said, bless them that curse you. You know, do the opposite. Knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. But he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. 
Let him eschew evil. That word eschew means to, uh, to turn away from it. They use it in the book of Job about, about him. He eschewed evil. He turned away from it. And do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. The word ensue means pursue it. Don't, don't pursue evil. Pursue good. Peace. And here's why. Verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. God's watching. God knows. God wants to bless us. But he can't if we don't obey him. Not the way he wants to. Uh, so you see here, uh, you know, God has all these wonderful things, and we can, we can put them into practice. We, we love it when people practice them on us, <laughs> and we need to practice them on others. And our motive, if you go back to Philippians chapter 2 there, our motive is, in I think, in verses 3 and 4. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. In a sense, our motive is others. But even more than that, it's Jesus. You know the little song we sing, Jesus and others and you? What a wonderful way to spell joy. Put yourself last and spell joy. That's, that's the motive here. Now he uses a very difficult word in verse 3, nothing. That means not one thing. There is never a, a time when it's right to operate through strife or vainglory. Strife, uh, I was looking at the definition of it, and one of it is electioneering. You know when they go get the elections, I'm right, they're wrong. You should elect me, you should get rid of them. You know? that, God says that's not the way we want to operate as Christians. Partisanship, uh, me first attitude, contention. Uh, we don't want to operate through strife. Vain glory means empty pride. The modern word for that is self-esteem. <laughs> Vain glory. God says we're not to do it in a selfish, proud, ungodly way. But the way we're to do it, man, this, this is a hard verse here, verse 3. In lowliness of mind, let each esteem other just as good as themselves. Hang on, no. Better than themselves. Yeah, I've often puzzled over that. I thought... Man, why do we have to make them better than us? Can't we just be equal? <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't, God doesn't, God tells us that's not, not the way it's going to work. Not just as equal, better. Unfortunately, we get, often get this backward. You know, we're proud and we dishonor them. Uh, we honor ourselves and we humiliate others. And then we boast about it. Boy, I really humiliated him. <laughs> and God says, that's, that's exactly the wrong thing to do. You know, stop and think about it. If each one of us was humble and honored others, we'd all get what we need. You know, if you were humble and honored me and I was humble and honored you, man, we'd, what, a, what a life we'd have. We would really enjoy coming to church. Well, I know I'm going to be honored there. Those are great people. They're all better than me, though. <laughs> you know, it's, what a wonderful thing God is, is promoting here. How to get along. Part of it has to do with our respect for others. And you know, it's easy to say because sometime, someplace, someone is going to wrong you. And then, ooh, boy, the respect o meter is going to go down. <laughs> but you know, you don't just respect people for what they do. You respect them for who they are before God. We've all done wrong. We all will do wrong. God wants us still to honor each other. You know, sometimes honoring someone will be to point out to them, listen, what you're doing is wrong. In love and in kindness. I can guarantee you, if you have no respect for someone, you're not going to care what they do. But if you respect them, you're going to see the potential for good that God sees in them. And you're going to say, oh, no, don't do that. Come back. Come back to God's standard. Our motive is others. And really our goal, go back to Philippians 1, verse 27. I, I think this would probably be the goal here. Only let your conversation, now that word conversation means your manner of life, the, the way you live. Let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit 
with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. This is our goal, to work together to enhance and promote the gospel. We want to be able to work together as Christians. And you know, we need to be careful that we're not putting up the barriers that would keep us from working together. What does he say in Romans? As much as lieth in you. you know, live peaceably with all men. There's the rest of it. Working together to enhance and to promote the gospel. Really, our ultimate goal in life is to glorify God. And that's what we're talking about here. The reason we need to get along together is to glorify God. And you know, the harder it is to get along, the more glory God will get. You know, there's some people that are real easy to love and like and honor. But it's the person that's hard to love and hard to like and hard to honor. Man, when you can do that, boy, God will get the glory. You ever think of that? It's true, isn't it? And our pattern, of course, is Jesus. Did you notice that in verse 5? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let me, let me read on. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. As Alice was singing tonight, you know, make me a servant, I thought, That's not really most people's goal in life. I've often said it. I've probably heard somebody else say it. You know, we, we like talking about being a servant until somebody treats us like one. Make me a servant, Lord. Brother Bramlett, go and get that for me. Brother Bramlett, shine my shoes. Brother Bramlett, you're going to have to change your schedule for me. <laughs> That's what a servant does. Now, I'm not saying that we... We just have to do what it, whatever anybody says. We're ultimately, we serve, we serve the Lord. But our pattern is Jesus Christ. He set aside His glory. He, he left heaven's glory. He, he became a man. You know, for us, that's all right. We don't mind. That's the highest we're going to get. Uh, but for God, that's a, that's a big step down. He became a man so that He could be the sacrifice for our sins. You know, as I, as I looked at this, I noticed that God didn't actually include forgiveness in this portion of Scripture. I think this is a case where we might say, it goes without saying. <laughs> you know, when you're like Jesus, you're going to forgive. In fact, I think in a, in, a, in a way, you might say it's a given. Uh, forgiveness is just a part of being like Jesus. It, it just happens that in my, my devotions in the morning, I'm reading through the book of Mark. And, and just this week, I read Mark 11:25. When you stand praying, forgive, if you have awed against any. But those are inclusive words, aren't they? Ought against any. That your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. And this, this next verse has always just boggled my mind. If ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. That's a very serious verse. Now, I don't think that's a conditional verse. I think what that is, is that's a verse saying, if you're saved, you're going to forgive. That's, that's just the character of the Lord. And you know, if we're going to be like Jesus, we're not only going to have to love people, we're going to have to forgive them. That means you eat the cost. And you know, the thing I find, you, you say, okay, I'll forgive. Well, then the next day it comes to your mind. And boy, that irritation comes to mind. And you have to say, no, I'm going to forgive. And then the next day, and, and I could go on and on, couldn't I? But you know, we need to deal with it over and over sometimes. And we've just got to determine, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forgive. You see, forgiveness is a part of being like Jesus. So we see, to, to get along, we've got to humble ourselves. We've got to honor others. And we've got to love and we've got to forgive. In getting along with others, let me just leave you with a couple of things here that I think will help you. Be careful what you allow yourself to think. You know, a lot of the problems between us start in our mind. We think, I've been wrong. And we begin to think about that wrong. And we think how wrong that wrong was. And how we could, you, know, you can go on and on, can't you? Be careful. You know, the Bible says in verse 2 there of Philippians that we need to be like-minded. I believe that's talking about being like-minded with Jesus. He's the pattern. 
In verse 5, he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I, I don't believe God or Jesus uh, live contemplating how we've wronged them. I don't think they play it over and over in their mind and think how they can, they can get vengeance. God says he puts it away. Uh, be careful what you allow yourself to think. And, and you control your thinking. Don't kid yourself. Secondly, be careful what you say about others. There's a, there's a real temptation sometimes to share something that's true but harmful. Or partly true. Or just enough of the truth. <laughs> be careful what you say about others. He says in verse 2, having the same love. Thirdly, be careful what you say to others. There's also a tendency to let things build up to where you, you let them have it. And you feel better for about five seconds. They don't feel better. And then as you, your conscience kicks in, you don't feel better either. He says nothing through strife or vain glory. We need to realize as Christians, it's all right to disagree. We can disagree about things without being disagreeable. We can talk about things. You'd be amazed what we can disagree about. But it's not all right to be mean and nasty about it. That's never right. It's all right to discuss it. And, and then the fourth thing, not only be careful what you allow yourself to think and what you say about people and what you say to them. I didn't know quite how to say this last one, but in getting along with others, the Bible indicates there's a principle that you need to apply your concerns about the others to yourself. If you're concerned about their honesty, stop and think about your own honesty. If you're concerned about their character, stop and think about your own character. It's just a principle in God's Word. Uh, Matthew 7, uh, where he talks about, uh, what's the word he uses? Um, the moat. Why, why are you looking at the moat in their eye when you've got a beam in your eye? Uh, in Romans chapter 2, he, he talks about how the things we judge are often things that are problems in our own life. Now, let me encourage you, in getting along with others, use it as a, a mirror, something to bounce off to, to think, well, Lord, what's going on in my life that, that needs to be taken care of? God, help us to, to stand fast in one spirit. I don't know how important this, this church is to you. I, I believe it's important to God. Amen. We're just a little church, but we don't have to always be a little church, but we can be a good church. We can be a great church for the Lord if we'll do what God says. Help, you know, we need God's help to stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Let me tell you, the gospel is worth sacrificing yourself for. We get so used to building up ourselves and living for self that we forget Christ sacrificed himself for us. And we have opportunities many times, especially in dealing with others, to sacrifice self for the gospel. Uh, like we read in, in Philippians 1.27, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith, for the faith of the gospel. Look with me in, in Philippians 1, verse 9. I think really this, this is a good couple of verses to end on. This I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Now, that's what God wants for us. He needs to get the glory. Our love needs to abound. God can help us to get along. And that doesn't mean just ignoring people. That doesn't mean walking away when you have a problem. It means loving them, liking them, <laughs> honoring them, forgiving them. At least those four things. There's probably many others that we could look at. I, I thought maybe at this point it might be good to just uh, take a, a time and, and pray. I don't know about you. But I have people I have trouble dealing with. I have people that in my mind, I have trouble liking them. I guess I shouldn't say that. You might think, oh, is it me? <laughs> it's amazing. Things go on in your life that you just never, 
Never expect sometimes. And we need to be careful. Uh, just a, a time of, of prayer. Let's just take a few minutes. Maybe there's someone that comes to your mind. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to help you to honor them and forgive them. Thank <laughs> you.